Lot 36. And you curious? It's a seance table. Like Ouija board seance? A bit more serious than that. Here we are, we're talking about Lot 36 for Cabinet of Curiosities, which uh, Mark and I colored last uh, last summer, I guess, right? Did. This was actually the times, actually. We had a first pass the grade, and then six months later, we did it again with VFX. That's right, that's true, that's right. And this was actually the third episode that was shot and ended up being the first one that was shown in the order of how they appear on Netflix. And uh, this was Guillermo Navarro directing it. This one's about a guy who, uh, one of those auction uh, storage locker auction hunters who uh, finds the, uh, a locker filled with a bunch of stuff who happens to be this man here who we find out meets his uh, demise in the very beginning. And uh, the whole story is basically about what he finds inside that storage locker. And also the secret behind what this guy was doing with that locker for all those years and uh, his sister disappearing and the mystery of that being uncovered. So it was a good uh, a good connection between the opening. This is sort of the beginning that tells you the whole story, which you don't really understand what it means until you get to the very end. But we shot this with, uh, it was the Red Monstro, I believe, and Zeiss Master Primes. It was uh, 4K because we're shooting uh, straight uh, Super 35 with the Master Primes. And from what I remember, we shot this clean, so there was no diffusion, just the smoke like you can see here in this sequence. Um, and we had, we had this giant storage facility set, which you see later, that was tied in with an exterior of a, of a real uh, storage facility in Hamilton. So we kind of connected the two, the exterior and the interior in that way. Uh, but we basically filled an entire stage at the Netflix studios downtown Toronto uh, with a uh, the storage facility set. All the hallways, the actual locker itself was all on stage. It, looks like a big it was a huge, hallways. it was, it was pretty big. I mean, it, could, it had to be big enough that we could wander through it later and, and feel like we were in this labyrinth of endless corridors. So I remember for this, because we, I think if I remember correctly, we, we, uh, we had a show lot that we had inherited uh, Jasper of Raking, who was our uh, DIT, he had made a look that was used for a previous episode and he showed me it. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And I, and I think we maybe modified it slightly, but more or less used what he had made. Well, yeah, Jasper and I worked together um, on, the, on the very first one. That's right. And, uh, yeah. You know, he started talking about some Kodachrome emulation because that's what the filmmakers from episode one were going for. And. So then we talked about it and I said, well, I'm going to rebuild that because I need to make sure that in HDR world, mm -hmm. that it's all going to translate because, um, again, like I said before, we sent it to our color science guy, Josh Pines, and he does all the math to make all the roll-offs and stuff work in HDR. And um, so, yeah, starting with a film emulation and has a little bit of that cyan shadow and warm highlight, you know, kind of warm. D60 white point. That's right. And because that's what we think looks cool. Which I which, kind of stylized shows. Totally. And in this opening sequence, the old man's apartment, you feel it even more because we actually lit with super warm light. If I remember correctly, this was, uh, they were 5K mole beams, tungsten pushing through those windows, dimmed down to like 30%. So they were, and the camera was around, I think, 4,000 or Kelvin or something like that. So it's super warm, sunny kind of uh, feel, which this lot makes you feel even uh, stronger. Right, so it has a, a warm feel for sure, and we, we mess with that uh, by getting a little more, um, a little more of the green, yeah. teal, cyan. It's interesting when you when you toggle between the offline there and, the, and what our final look was. You know, some of that comes just saying, how can we make this look like a dirtier place than you know, maybe originally photographed. Totally. That's all pleasant, but you know, if you kind of get into this 
mixed light feel. Yeah, that greeny, that greeny blue comes through more. Maybe it feels a little more. That's the, that's the negative there. Right. Um, what's complementary here? We got the you know the warm coming from the curtains, and we have somewhere we have this green and blue light coming from inside and all the reflections and everything. Um, yeah, and it was that feeling of like, uh, this guy's lived in this apartment for like decades. We pulled the highlights back as you, you just did there. We were, yeah, we're diffusing them a bit. And then we have this kind of this, this layer here, which uh, our mid-tone detail adjustment that kind of- Snaps it. Things a bit of a snap. I like using this feature when, if you've used, this, if you've used diffusion on the camera, then this works well by kind of sharpening the blacks, mm -hmm. you know, the way we're doing it kind of make it feel um, like there's a little more edge. Yeah, totally. But, Without feeling processed. You know, it's not for every show, but a show that's stylized like this, that has, you know, this kind of, this kind of content, this kind of energy. Yeah. And it makes him look even more Show it on the on the guy again. That like, shot looking up at. Yeah, let's go. Uh, is there a closer shot? Yeah, I think there is. There's one when he's back up here. So off we go here. Yeah, that's really cool. What it does to the the way the highlights meet the mid tones. And again, we're. Yeah, there's the negative. Now we're darkening things. We're making moody. And we're I think we still protect this space. Yeah, there you go. Just to even edge it up a little more. And when you get into things like monsters and creatures, the edgier the better. That's the idea. It helps with the texture of the their skins and things too. <laughs> it's also worth noting that this was the story set in 1991 in, in Buffalo, so that was our touch point of like, okay, what does 1991 Buffalo look like? Apparently, it's a lot of guts falling on people in that time period. And then here we are in Hamilton. Good old Hamilton doubling as Buffalo, which I guess is a good approximation. And all, I mean, this was all natural light. This was basically natural with, we, we had a camera mounted to the car. We just basically negatived the, the sides of the, the windows and it's, it's pretty much natural light. We just chose the time of day and the street angle to be on to let the, the sun do what it's doing. So that's just literally. And it's our first introduction to Sky. Yeah, exactly. Complain about the government. Yeah, he's I've been into his job. Vietnam vet who's sort of disgruntled with the state of the government. So here we are in the storage locker set. So this is Hamilton. This is the Hamilton exterior. And now we're inside. So we didn't venture too far away from the left. Like yeah, there's the, the there's the light. A little more trying to get a little more separation between what's warm and what's that's right. Warm. Yeah. Get the wardrobe. Well, what's interesting with this is that the all those fluorescent light fixtures, uh, Tamara and Shane and her team uh, were, were trying to source these fluorescent fixtures that were in her concept art. And then Guillermo Navarro had a very specific request of like, I, he didn't want the light to hit the walls that much. But we knew this was gonna be our primary light source. So then we, we did a bunch of tests where we modified those, those fixtures, which they fabricated. And those are just Titan tubes inside. And we actually made the, the skirt at the bottom longer uh -huh. so that the light didn't go up the walls as much. So we were kind of trying to keep that, keep the walls darker. And of course, all that aging, all that scenic paint work they did is incredible to keep it looking dirty and real. And But that's all that's all their uh, scenic painting team. But you also, above that, above these grates had lights too. Right? That's right. That, and that was something that, that Tamara had mentioned that you know when they'd seen references of real storage facilities, some of them are multi-level and often they're open to the top and they have these sort of cage ceilings. So we embraced that because we wanted to have the option of, because there's so much play of the light turning off in this place, because the whole thing about the timer and you got to keep turning the timer and make the lights go on. What does it look like when the lights go off? So if the timers go off, then basically if we didn't have any other light source, the place would be pitch black. So how do you get light into the space realistically when all the lights go off? Because the lights are going to be constantly going off throughout this story. So Tamara's suggestion was to have the the open mesh ceiling. And then we went with this notion of like, there's there's other lighting in this huge building that's way up high that you can't really see, but when the lights go off, you feel it in the space, um, which means you're actually seeing 
the studio and you see through those the, the mesh ceiling, that's actually just the open sound stage. Mm -hmm. But it's so dark, once the lights are, are off in there, you can't tell that you're seeing the studio. The palette from this, it kind of carries from even the beginning scene and that's probably right. fed into, you know, why you started going cooler in areas because we're getting all these um those like cyan pigments in the wall paint yes yeah, which is in the, the art direction which but we needed that differentiation so it wasn't just one tone right. but that kind of carries through in almost every scene totally uh, just the ones in here even just the hits of the denim in the in the in the wardrobe there and that slight bit of haze is helping just, you know, you feel the you feel the dustiness of that place and the light sources. Yeah, and I wasn't sure about when we were going like this much, like with this town, if changing, having the, the flashlight go this warm, because you can see what's on the negative, it's not really, but. It's right, yeah. But the correction we're putting on there, so, but it's like, oh, you know what, I guess it's okay. It's, yeah. It's like, it's not. LED. It's, no, it's and, ugly looking. and it's the time period. It's like this is pre-LED flashlight. And this was interesting because this was kind of like, because we did have uh, cuts to the exterior, we wanted to feel the the sense of daylight coming in here because we know there's a a view from the office to the parking lot, which plays later in the story. So it was important that we kept that feeling of there's daylight streaming in. You can feel it in the background there as well. There's like window light. You can feel it in his skin there. Yeah, the great reflection though. It's, it's so we had, we were kind of really letting the window be the, the kind of influence of the, the light in here with the little tungsten hits of his like desk lamp and stuff. But yeah, we still keep that. But you feel it all here. Gold hits and cool shadows. That's right. I think even the fluorescent lights, like we sort of played them a little more like warmer tungsten because they were LED fixtures that we could control. So we kind of took them away from being regular fluorescents and went kind of against that kind of cliche of being the cold and green. And these are, you saw, shot this practical, right? Like off the screen? We did, so this is real playback and we wanted to go, so this it's an old, it's a real CRT tube TV that we really had playback. This was actually the first thing we shot. This, this stuff here was like our camera test day. So we did our, it was our lighting, pre-light camera test day of the security camera footage and then also served as the security camera point of view. Yeah, that's interesting. You can see how much we kind of brought that that green yellowiness into it. With a little. It. It's nice. And uh, That's still that, that uh, mid-tone enhancement. Yeah. You know, not every episode got that treatment, but um, it worked for this because it was kind of that like you know, the buffalo vibe, I guess you could call it, kind of gritty. Gritty is this what yeah, has to work. Because these are really great, like even these little... Little macro shots. I think that was the 100 mil macro, which is such a great lens. It's so like crispy and... Yeah, even, even looking at like that's how much the lead is bending. Yeah, right. Down. <laughs> but you can see how much blue's in the TV to start with. Yeah, yeah that's what a black and white TV kind of looks like. That's right, it's like I blue. Mean, it's probably a little less purple than that, but we or just adding some tone there. Yeah, totally. Right. And didn't, because didn't, you did a pass with, with Guillermo Navarro after this too, and he, he also did a little bit of a warmer touch to certain things as well, yeah, right? He did, and I, I, I couldn't say exactly which of these corrections is like, it might be just this nuance. I think it was the warmer. Here, yeah. And then he wanted a little warmer. That's it's quite. Show that again, let's see. It's. Um, yeah. Um, you want a little more. I had a conversation with him after this and, and he said, oh, I just went a little warmer here and there. So I think that feels like that's that yeah. little amount. Subtle, and I don't know if it was every scene, but um, this one, I remember, yeah. And here we are with the lights off. Yeah. This is a good reference of, of what the set, so this was the trick of, so not only did we have those, that kind of warm light you feel like kind of backlighting through, which were the uh, Studio 472s, 
it was a, we had banks of them around the whole studio strategically placed to like not see them as much and to rake one side or the other of the walls but we also had uh, I think there were Kino celebs all the way down the center creating that you can feel that kind of cool fill on the floor mm -hmm. so that was so that when there's no light there's still because just those uh, the hard Reiki light alone would be not enough you just need to have like blackness in there so you can see on Tim's face there's like a hint of cool light and that's the base layer of the, of the celebs above and we had to sort of strategically place those so you don't see them and tease them really well because they're they're hanging I don't know five or six feet above that mesh ceiling which is why you see those sort of shadows on the floor that's actually the the those lights being shadowed by the fluorescent fixtures but when the fluorescents come on they disappear it's kind of that trick of like once the fluorescents turn on they vanish they're just subtly there still yeah and this was the same thing in here it was the, it was the tungsten uh, bare light bulbs that you see here were kind of providing all that warmth and then the same thing with the celebs over top that were creating the base fill because again we had the lights on off thing happening in here as well so yeah and those are just bare like 60 watt light bulbs that we dimmed down a little bit and now the lights are off yeah see that's see, this is a yeah that wasn't supposed to be off there that was a cue that we that wasn't that was wrong there and I haven't actually, I haven't shot with these lenses in a long time. It was kind of refreshing to come back and see the Master Primes again and actually just embrace their, their crispiness. This was also a thing where we, we augmented the building. You'll see in this wide shot later, like we, we added a whole bunch of uh, wall lights to the outside of the, uh, all those lights you see on the building in the background. Those, you put those up. we put those up and on the actual facade of the main building itself because it had no lighting on it and it felt, I was worried that at night it would just feel kind of empty. So we added our own, uh, all those on the top there. Now that ambience in the back, that's just Hamilton light. Hamilton with a bit of our own, we added a bit of ambience. On that our, crane in there? We had a crane back there that was just okay. throwing some weak ambience onto the background. And Even here outside, we have that same color palette going on. That's right. If you look at, if you look at the chip chart on this, it's like you have these warm tones in the, well, there's blue highlights back there, but. I think we had kind of more or less the same color temperature of our like fill and everything, so that the the, the 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 correction applies both ways. And then you get the screen outside. And the neon was for real. We actually had that neon sign made. I remember Tamara came into my office with this giant display of like all these little neon lights that were like the color chart of neon lights you could pick from. So we're like, let's pick which neon, actual neon that we want. So we made the sign based on what we chose. Huh? Wait, can you toggle the look again here just to see what it... And where we started from? Yeah. Um, there's, the there's the negative. Yeah. Back there. Okay, it's just a little more on the warm side. I think it was always a little bit warmer. Just yeah. twisted it a little bit to get, you know... I think this is a really good evolution of what we started with. This was always going to be warm because, you know, we're away from our other place. And we forced it to be super warm. Yeah, I, this is very close to what we said originally. We just, you know, broke the blacks to figure out. And all, yeah, we just, we put in like a, a ton of practicals, like just to make it be, it's, it's all these antique lamps in this antique shop lighting them. That was sort of the vibe. And Shane found all those great lamps. I remember we had a hint of the same, like slightly cool fill light coming from above them. You just feel it on the on the shadows of their skin a little bit, which kind of connects you back to the to the storage facility, but it's its own thing. You can feel it on the shadow side of his face too. And yeah, and this is one moment where Martha walks away, right? Oh, she goes to the phone in the back. In the see, you just catch her. And she, did, yeah, this little moment. I don't think we windowed her here either. I think this is just kind no, of we, we said this is where just leave it. I think I do have. A, we were just doing this key to try and twist. Just we just sat on those lamps a little bit to get them out of that. Yeah, we pushed them down a little bit, right? We took the saturation down a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, here. That's great. She calls Roland. She got that bit of attach lights, it's all easy. Yeah. I mean, it's quite simple. This this was, I mean, literally, I think it was like kind of one lighting setup that almost worked for both angles. In a 12 foot circle. Yeah, because it was just that one pile of practical lamps and a bit of top fill. Yeah, so this was this was all blue screen. It was blue screen with a bit of a, we had a lighting rig and we had a rain rig kind of just gently spritzing on the windows and stuff. But then uh, the VFX team put in those backgrounds and the rain itself, the raindrops. What's cool is that they matched the lighting rig we had to make the chase light of the street lights passing. They took their cue from that and added the hits to the rain following the, the chase that we had going with the lights. It's pretty good. Some of the shine that's coming on her face and how nice it's coming. It is. I've not a lot of color, but at the same time. But what's nice is we let the sodium vapor vibe come through. So you still feel that orangey yellow hit occasionally. But then they feel like they're almost just in that like desaturated night gray zone, which I don't think we really did anything to that, did we? It was like that was kind of. Yeah, I think it was um, pretty close. Again, we're just a little bit more on the warm side. Yeah. And we're just trying to separate with a lot of what I was doing. Totally. Um, and then we added the camera shake on this on these. So I take them off. Oh yeah, that's right. We should talk about that because that's actually really cool. It's just like it's it's fine. Yeah, run it for a bit without the shake just to see it. Uh, let's do a few shots. So if I do this, so of course being in a studio, there's like no actual. We weren't really influencing the camera with shake because we knew we were gonna do this later. But it adds that kind of high frequency jitter that so says. This is all fine, and there's a little bit of you know movement. But it feels kind of dead. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're looking at the backgrounds, they're integrating great. The lighting's all integrating. And you like, and you could, this would, this would sell believable, but. But then. If you watch this again. <laughs> and then we put this back on one. Yeah. With a, just a bit of a, High frequency, north south only. Yeah, it's the up and down. Just as it would be if it was attached to the truck. Yeah. Probably. And uh, yeah, you can really see the difference here. And more on tighter shots and a little less on wides because yeah. that's kind of what happens when. Uh, so there it is, camera shake. Yeah. So to get. There's a lot of playing around with, with these camera shake is a lot of different things. So a lot of different people mm -hmm. are used in a lot of different scenarios, not just car driving. So if I, if I reset this entire thing, uh, let's take a look at what camera shake is on default. It's like, right. This. It's like a, it's like a slow earthquake. <laughs> Like That's a, what it thinks camera it's shake is. Camera on a bungee cord. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of futzing around to try and. Yeah, it's also interesting in this sequence that Guillermo uh, Navarro he really wanted to shoot these raking two shots with his swing and tilt lenses. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a couple of these raking two shots on both sides where they're both in focus, mm -hmm. and it's not a split diopter. It's the it's the swing and tilt lenses, which were a little tricky to finesse and everything, but once we got it, it's actually quite jarring because it's like, oh, what's happening? Like, they're both in focus, but the background's soft and like, you're, there's no split diopter effect. And it's a good, it's a good gag. I, I don't think I'd done a scene like that before, use, like using it in that, in that way. This shot here is that. So when Roland looks forward, you'll see that his, he's sharp too. They're both sharp. Because you think, is it comped? It's, yeah. I think what's how it works well here because it's so dark. Yeah. So you're not really aware of what's happening. It's like, oh, they're both sharp, but it's dark. And you, your eyes kind of just finding both of them in the darkness. So that's one of those moments where you see the practical light on the sill. Yeah. And then what's in the background is the VFX that would just match the light. So we talk about. Yeah, exactly. Where that, the, the swipe goes by of the light and the rain gets caught. 
And of course, he doesn't have a window on his side because it got smashed. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he figured he'd just be soaked. I think he yeah, says, "What?" Yeah, yeah he's, it's just dripping on him. Yeah. He says, "Could you roll up the window?" And he just like looks at him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they did a good job with this because I don't I don't know where the plates came from for the background VFX wise, or they how they generate. Because when we shot this, we didn't really know exactly what the outside was going to be. All we, all we stipulated was that it's going to be sodium vapor street lights going by. And that's all we knew. We didn't have a plate to reference or anything. Mm -hmm. And the VFX... You didn't shoot anything yourself. They no, we didn't shoot anything. They, they generated it or they found something and augmented it. But good. for going with that, it, I think they did really amazing with this. And then, of course, we tied into the exterior of this place. That's real right here, right? And then now we're real, and that's real rain. There's our lights we added to the building. Uh, you know, we had a lift, a crane on the far right there that was creating that, that backlight through the rain with, a, with a, uh, an LRX. It was a uh, 12K tungsten uh, LRX single, given that. I think this is where we had to like tie in our, just made a little more of our sodium. That's right. Coming out there to tie in with this. Yeah, that's right. I don't know, just to feel on the outside. No, it's good. It's a good tie-in. It keys us into that. It was tricky. It looks, it's just sort of like deceivingly simple that the the lights, when they go off, they go off. But when they come back on, they're supposed to be fluorescent. So we wanted to have them kind of have a little bit of a weird sputter so they don't just all come on perfectly like the way they would if they're LEDs. Does that happen or? When you see them come on later, you'll see that they, they flutter on like that. There's a bit of a staggered sort of de decay across all the lights. But that was programmed to make it look like that. So the, our dimmer board op did a great job of programming it. We had this great actor who played a lot. She actually played a few different uh, creatures in the series. All right. was she, also she, she was the witch. Oh, man. She was the lotion lady in The Outside. Uh, there she is. So that's what it was before. So the trick was with this was like we wanted to make this be as dark as we could make it and still see something, you know, so we didn't really reveal too much of her. And I remember we lit it obviously a little bit brighter on the day, so we had that range. And then Mark, you and I pulled it back to kind of just really yeah. hide hide her somewhat. Yeah, I mean box Yeah, we pulled the whole bottom down. Because we were trying to like keep, you know, not show as much, like let it be a little more right. in your imagination. Pretty amazing movie effect too. It's happening there. So seven four. There she is. So you know there was some going back and forth on these VFX. Uh, what I mean by that is you know. There were several versions that you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Dennis speak to you know how the approval process goes, but uh, they integrated very well, and we just he just came in and you know when we were reviewing with the director, we're just like, well, okay, we need to bring that up a bit. I want to see a little more of the creature. That's pretty good, actually. Do it a bit. Yep. And then it was good. Um, Toggle that again. Let's just see that. Yeah. It's just because we were going so deep in there. Yeah. Know, like it's all there in the negative, but I mean, we were going so deep with the atmosphere that we needed to bring that back. Yeah. You know, and just so you can feel into the yeah, depths of her. Keep the, the whole room going. Um, we do. It's pretty subtle. We were. Even that. And that's just changing the color of the back. It's too warm. Yeah. Stop. And it's great. And again, what an important thing was to see <laughs> this whole the teeth here. Um, yeah, right. The maw that was the maw. Correct. I forgot what that was. Um, and yeah, we just just shaping a little bit, you know, pulling that down a bit to match it. The motion is is quite good yeah, on all that. It's it really the, the gravity of it and the motion. Even there, it's like more, more stuff. It's funny too. That book 
that he's holding wasn't meant to be like burned like that in a sense. Like we, it was rigged to, to catch on fire like that, but then the shot you see of it dropping on the ground and it's burning, that wasn't something we had planned for. But we saw it and Navarro was like, oh, it'd be great to like, I want to see the book, the cover on fire. So we're like, oh, okay. And like, we, nobody had actually planned for it. They were like, okay, the Jeff and his effects team like put some like flame paste on it. And we just took the hero prop and like set it on fire and threw it on the floor and like shot it within a few minutes of that, that sequence. So it was kind of a nice bonus that wasn't planned for. Yeah, so there's a little bit of that's cool. different separation of color that's happening on finding places to put little hints of color to separate, to separate it. But, uh, and the VFX. It's, it's also really cool to see how well they, they uh, integrated and used the, the lighting in the room to, to uh, light the tentacles. Right. They really feel integrated. That's the shot here. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so that gives you a sense of what's what we captured. Because we know that's going to go on, we're afraid to just get down. Think. What's that whole thing of like finding your your base level of like how, like what is the darkest point, and that's your reference of like how bright do we make the brightest we point? Darker, so uh, what I'm trying to I think we did that, yeah, so we, we darkened the floor a lot, that's yeah, right. Which most of the time we didn't need to. Um, again, so this is, you know, Garrett asked for it to be a little warmer, you know, yeah. in general tone wise. And then he asked for it to be darker, so we actually called it darker. So I think, because I was looking at this past pretty dark. And like, as you say, the lights come on pretty quickly. And I think that's animation. That's what that is. So this is, it gets darker when the lights come on because it didn't want us. We didn't want it as bright. Oh, so you dynamic the, the, the yeah, so I see. This part was always that dark. We did a, this part we did, I did that. Okay, that's right. Yeah, during the flicker, we kind of brought it down. Yeah. Stick the little. That's crazy. Yeah, it's great what that does. It's like, it really, it's amazing how much that makes your eye go to her. Mm -hmm. And it seamlessly f kind of blends in with the architecture. Yeah, you know, it didn't move enough perspective-wise that we had to... And he crosses through it, too. Yeah, I mean, he crossed through it, but it's, you know, I didn't even roto him out because it's just... It's so quick and... Just, you know, notice it. Um, and it's going over her legs, too. But... Yeah, sometimes you can get... You can take it. You totally. Know, like, sometimes we have to key that. Uh, to make it work, but sometimes a simpler thing works works best. That's right. Uh, and that's it. Point. The end. The lights turning up. Lights out. His lights are out. <laughs>